I just recently played through Ender Lilies right before Ender Magnolia was released and can confirm that Ender Magnolia improves on pretty much every criticism I had about Ender Lilies from the map system to combat to NPCs and more. Not gonna lie, I thought Ender Magnolia was gonna have a full release on March 25th, but it's only in early access. This review is based on what's available in the early access, which I'm going to call a demo at this point. The reason being is that this demo will only take you about two to four hours to complete, depending on how long it takes you to do the bosses. In Ender Magnolia, you play as Lilac, who's an attuner and has the ability to free the humunculus or humunculi for more than one. We wake up in some factory alone and eventually find out that there's other attuners out in the world and we need to go find them and save the humunculi. Right from the bat, the music is absolutely beautiful at the home screen. I mean, just listen to this. That piano sound, it's just as good as Ender Lilies, if not better. With just one song, it can be really mellow, and then as soon as those enemies get close, it picks up and becomes more dramatic. It's very well done. One thing I'll say when you start the game, the text in the opening cutscene goes by really, really fast. One of the first things that I noticed with the controls in life is that the dodge roll is more than just a dive and falling hard. Lilac is able to dive and roll. It's a major improvement. It looks less funny than with Ender Lilies, but we'll allow it. Spoiler alert though, we won't have this dodge roll for very long. Another thing with the controls that I'm really glad we have right from the beginning is the run and sprint ability. We have it right from the beginning of the game. You'll find out that the world feels more spread out than with Ender Lilies. So Ender Magnolia just there's sometimes there's like longer rooms or things are just a little bit more spread out. So yes, sprints is very helpful. The first ability we find is the healing ward. It's the same as Ender Lilies. You get a limited amount of uses and it replenishes at the respites. Same thing, no change there. One of the major updates though, is that the mini map is updated and fixed. The mini map looks like boxes that get filled in as you go. They start out black and white until they're explored and then they turn blue. And once they're blue, that lets you know that everything on that area of the map has been found. The map also looks like it's in proportion to the size of the room. And one thing that I'm not sure of how much I like is the fact that the ability lock doors show red on the map. And when you get an ability, it'll show blue with an arrow of which side you need to come at the door from. Part of me likes it and the other part of me feels like it's a little bit too hand-holding. I'm sure that ultimately I'll be happy that it will end up reducing the amount of time just looking for doors that we already found, right? We've already earned it. We've already found the door. Just mark it on the map. We come across a homunculus named Nola that has lost its magic. Homunculus is the same thing as a spirit from Ender Lilies. We give it a touch of magic and it's able to come back to life, remove the sword from its own body and aid us. Very similar to the first weapon we've gained in Ender Lilies. The triple attack that we gain now has a little bit more movement and control when attacking. If you hold forward when doing a triple attack, you'll actually take a step forward with each attack. And if you just press the attack button, you'll stay in place. Initially, I like this a lot. I imagine you'll need to stay in place for the larger bosses and have to chase down enemies that have a little bit of a knockback. Speaking of knockback, this is another thing that is an improvement on Ender Lilies. The small enemies will now clearly show that you're dealing a decent amount of damage. As you attack them, they will get locked in place or knocked back. It is great to see all of these little additions that are just improving off of Ender Lilies. If you're wondering what's in the pause menu, it's pretty much the same as Ender Lilies. There's the ability to fast travel, which you gain a little bit later. The homunculi, which is the same as spirits. Equipment, which is new, if I remember correctly. Then you've got relics. Uh, there's a way to enhance memories, extras like your clothing and difficulty, which you can't change the difficulty in the early access version. You fight the first mini boss even before gaining a level. It's pretty easy as the attacks are pretty well telegraphed. The music is great and you get a chance to practice your sword distance as there's a little bit of knockback sometimes, but not all the time. You end up tuning to the boss, which you can now use Leto's abilities, similar to Ender Lilies, but now you can use both attacks at the same time. This is something I thought Ender Lilies could have used for sure and really excited to test out the combos that you get to use at the same time. There does not seem to be a limited number of uses for each of the abilities. It's just a cooldown, which is also really nice. Really early on in the game, we're seeing tons of improvements from the original game. And if you need improvement on your gaming PC, be sure to check out today's sponsor, Lenovo Legion. They have deals going on every day for both gaming PCs and laptops. This will help you run games from Ender Magnolia to Helldivers 2 on Mac settings. If that's something that you're into, now back to the review.
I did notice that if you're mid-swing for the sword, you can't trigger a different attack right at the same time. The text does say that you can do multiple attacks at the same time, so not sure if it'll stay that way or if it'll be changed in the final game. It bothered me that you couldn't be mid-sword swing and then call in another attack as it's another homunculus that's doing the attack. I don't know, I just found that weird. Shortly after the first boss fight, we get double jump and aerial dash right at the same time. These are major upgrades to most Metroidvania games. To get these abilities so early had me excited for anything that could be new in the game. I will say that the mid-air dash is really slow. It feels a little bit out of place. I made a lot of these notes as I'm playing the game and now going back looking at it. I imagine that we're getting lots of these abilities back to back because this is more of a demo and not exactly what we're going to get in the final game in the open area. I picked up an amulet and when checking the notes on it, rather than saying slightly increases the attack power, it says increased aerial attack power by 10%. I like this a lot more than what we were seeing with Ender Lilies because now I can think about how much attack is being increased by and make better decisions with the amulets that I'm going to wear. Again, just another improvement. First actual boss was a winged flying enemy. It was kind of annoying having to chase it down, but at least we were given the double jump ability before the boss fight. We weren't really equipped with any good aerial attacks at this point in the game, but it was cool that the winged enemy gives you an attack that is continuous. It's a bit hard to hold down and keep up with mobility. I really hope that we're able to map the back buttons on the Steam Deck so I can hold that down as one of the continuous attack buttons. It would make using the continuous attacks much easier. I found that the major bosses are just as difficult, if not more so, than with Ender Lilies, but again, this is just a demo. There's only a couple of major boss fights in the game, and a lot of the stuff could change. So after beating the first actual boss, you get Fast Travel Unlocked. I really like that Fast Travel is unlocked super early in the game. Not quite as early as Ender Lilies, but still really early on. Also, you don't have to return to a respite to be able to fast travel anymore. Before, you had to go to the pause menu, return to a respite, and then open up the menu to fast travel. Now, you can just open up the map, click on the respite you want to fast travel to at any time, and from the map, you can fast travel to wherever it is that you want to go. I like this a lot, and yet another improvement. Early on, you unlock an NPC named Crafteroy. Craftery? Whatever his name is. Where you can buy items and equipment like magic vial to increase equipment slots or defensive bracelets. At first there are not many, but then as you find items called Grimoire, I think they're called, that unlocks more at the shop. It's nice that we have lots of NPCs in the city, so it's not quite as dull and dreary. I also like that the shop is not static and we don't know exactly what the shop is going to be filled with as we progress in the game. I don't know if specific items are tied to specific grimoire or if it's just like as you pick up three, you now unlock just more items like they're they're unlocked in order. I don't know. We'll have to figure out how that goes. If you enjoyed the lo-fi music in the background of this video, please be sure to check out my lo-fi gaming music channel on YouTube and Spotify. Link will be in the description. So far, Ender Magnolia is very linear. As you play and beat bosses, you'll come across a few areas that say you can't progress any further in early access. Eventually, you'll reach a point where there's just nowhere else to go. I always appreciate when a demo has some sort of end screen and a percentage of completion so I know if I finished everything or not. Kind of like the Crow Sworn demo, if you had a chance to play that. Um, and if you haven't seen it, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below. Overall, the early access shows that Ender Magnolia has improved on almost every aspect from Ender Lilies. The map, combat, NPCs, and so on. I'm really happy with the direction that this is going. And now we just have to wait for the full release. I don't think that I'm going to keep playing the game as they release mini updates to the early access. I kind of want to just jump into the full game at this point. If you want to go check out the early access, I will leave a link down in the description below so you can check it out on Steam. Thank you so much to my members for supporting my channel. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. My name is Relia, and I hope to talk to you again more real soon. Thanks. Bye.